Hey you guys, it's Carolyn from Homesteading Family and today we're going to be taking a look at, a, at the cottage garden in all of its August glory. It is so beautiful right now. Everything's blooming and everything's ready to harvest kind of all at the same time. We're going to be talking about how to know when things are ready to harvest depending on what part of the plant you're going to be harvesting and we're just going to be taking a general look around. All right, well, this time of year, there's always a ton of work to be done out in the gardens. Even the cottage garden, where maybe we don't have quite the order that we have to maintain up in the main crop garden, um, but there's still a lot to do. So we're gonna be taking a look at it and taking a look at how it's grown over the last few months. Now, one of the things that's really important to realize when you're in a garden, you're working with herbs, really any plants that you're going to harvest, but herbs especially, is that you need to know the part of the plant that you're going to harvest and you need to know when to harvest that part. Different plants, uh, you harvest different parts. So right here, we have the plant borage and this plant is just happy as could be. You can see it is an amazing plant for pollinators. They absolutely love this plant, which that alone makes it worth having in the garden, in my opinion. I try to make sure that anything I put in the cottage garden is gonna cover um, several different uses and one of those is feeding the pollinators, bringing pollinators onto the property and keeping them here, keeping them happy. And so this plant is really good for this. But the borage is also really good for these little blossoms, these beautiful flowers. They can be used medicinally. Um, they can be used for a tincture medicinally for the wintertime blues. When you get SAD, seasonal affectation disorder. If you live in a place where it's sunny year round, you may laugh at that and think it's a joke. I know I used to think it was a joke when I lived in sunny Southern California, but now that I'm in the Northwest, I realize what that means and it's a very real thing. So people do make a tincture out of these blossoms. It's amazing when it's combined with St. John's wort blossoms for a wonderful tincture for that. But this is also an amazing plant to have in um, drinks because it actually cools your body systems. But the part of this plant that's used is that blossom. So of course you're not gonna harvest it until it blossoms. And you wanna get the really good fresh blossoms from any plant that you're working with where you're gathering the flowers. Now that's gonna be totally true of using this mullein plant for an ear oil. Um, for ear problems. This plant is really good at bringing down the infection, um, the inflammation from an ear infection. Uh, it, it's an amazing plant for reducing the pain there. And again, if you combine that with something like a St. John's wort um, to help with the nerve pain and a calendula to actually help with the infection in there, it's a really, really powerful oil made together um, for ears and for ear infections. It's the one we use in our house for all ear problems. But again, for this plant, you are harvesting the flower itself, the actual bud of the flower. Whoop. So you want to get that when it's nice and fresh and really healthy looking. You don't wanna wait until it starts to wilt on the plant. Again, this is the mullein plant. You do also use this for leaves, but when you wanna use it for leaves for respiratory issues, you would want to harvest that before the plant ever starts to flower or send up its flowering stalks. That's because when it does that, all of the focus of the plant's energy goes into this reproduction that it's doing through the flowers. And so you lose a lot of the potency in the leaves. So you wanna make sure if you're gonna harvest the leaves, you do it early in the season um, or in first year plants that are not sending up this flower stalk yet. Okay, let's go ahead and move on. Now in some of the plants, you're actually gonna harvest the seeds. And whether you're doing this for seed saving or you're doing this for food or medicinal value, um, you're gonna wait obviously until the seeds 
are harvestable and are ready. Now, this is a radish plant, and these radishes went to seed. Um, and so, you know, I don't worry about that too much. They're not very good for the root of the radish when that happens, but these make a great spicy little snack, fried up in a little bit of butter and then salted. These things are amazing, but they can be really spicy, so make sure you like spice. So when you want to use these for food, you're gonna wanna make sure they're still soft, but have pretty developed seeds on the inside. So this is just the right timing. You don't wanna wait until these get hard. Okay, so we're gonna be harvesting these in the next couple days and making a great, probably spicy adult snack. All right, now this is a great example of that mullein plant before it started to go to flower. You can see it's just starting to think about it, so I'm just about to miss my time. But right now I could still harvest this mullein for the leaf. We just harvested the sage, and again, those culinary plants are just the same. You wanna make sure that you get them before they flower for the most potency. Now, that doesn't mean you can't take it after they flower, it just means the leaves and the flavor is not gonna be as potent as if you did it beforehand. That's especially hard for something like basil. And over here I have the purple basil and some green basil. And they're trying to flower right now. So you need to go ahead and harvest these. And when you're harvesting, you're, you're uh, essentially pruning them, which means that you get more growth, more leaf growth out of them by pinching back those flowers. So all I'm gonna do to harvest these guys is harvest right down to the first set of leaves and just pinch them off. And I'm gonna do that for the whole plant. This is still great for food. This is gonna taste delicious and be great for winter preserving, but we wanna get this off of here before these actually bloom into flowers. You can see the hollyhocks have kind of gone wild this year. They're really happy. Now, some herbs you harvest for all of their aerial parts. And when you hear that term, the aerial parts, it means everything above the roots. So something like this um, bee balm right here, or monarda, you're gonna use this entire part medicinally. So again, you wanna kind of act as a pruning agent while you're doing um, your harvesting. So I'm gonna take this back down to the first set of really healthy leaves and just harvest it there. Now I'm gonna dry all the parts of this leaf, this stem, in order to use it for medicine, or you could just use it all just like this fresh if you're using a fresh application. Um, and then if I'm drying it, I'm just gonna pull them all off the stalk because the stalk is very woody and um, it's a little harder to use. So I'm gonna let them dry, but you're gonna use the flowering top and the leaves and the small stems when you hear all the aerial parts. Look at the calendula, it is very, very happy. When you're harvesting something for the flower bud, like in the case of calendula, you wanna get it really early in its flowering process. So you don't wanna wait until it's setting seeds like that. You can see this one's just starting to set seeds and leave the blossoms. And you don't really even wanna get it when it's fully open. You wanna catch it just as it's starting to open right here, something about like that. Now with calendula, when you're harvesting them, you want them to be sticky. That sticky is a good sign. It's kind of hard on your hands when you're out harvesting in the garden because you will get sticky. I don't know if you can see my fingers are sticking together just from touching those. That's a great sign that your calendula is just perfect. Here's um, some echinacea sitting right next to it over here. Valerian would be the exact same. Um, you want to let this plant die all the way back in the fall and let it start to die off. That's because when it's a perennial that you're harvesting the roots from, when it starts to die back, it's putting all of the energy back down into the root for winter storage. So you wanna wait till all that energy gathers in the root, but the ground's not frozen yet, so you can still harvest that root. And you want to go ahead at that point and dig these out. So I have a ways left for, um, for this plant, for the Ignatia. This is gonna take several months to get to ready to harvest. So 
one tip here, if you're ever harvesting roots from a plant, you want to shred those immediately when you get into the kitchen. You do not want to dry them in a big chunk. Otherwise they will be absolutely hard and um, you're gonna end up having to make sawdust out of them to get them to a usable state. So you wanna shred them while they're fresh right out of the garden and then go ahead and dry them for later use. So wow, you can see how much is going on in the garden. Now, a lot of times your plants start to flower before you're ready. This is the catnip. This is such a great plant here for, um, for families. It's a really, really a powerful plant, but a very safe and gentle acting plant. When it comes, <laughs> there's a bug right on the camera. <laughs> when it comes to, um, to, to babies and for stomachs, for fevers, for colds and flus is a great plant to ha have on hand. But again, you really wanna harvest the leaves off of this plant. So if you want to be able to continue your harvest, when it starts flowering, you need to come through and cut all these flowers off. And that will re-encourage some root, um, some, I'm sorry, some leaf growth instead. And then in a week or two before it flowers again, you can come back and harvest the leaves. Now, when this happens, I like to do what's called chop and drop out here in the garden, where I just take these parts that I don't really want and I just chop, chop them up real fine and turn them into mulch in the garden. This is just like the easy, lazy version of composting. <laughs> it does it all by itself right in the garden. Okay, so you can see I have a lot of harvesting to do out here over the next few weeks as things are starting to get mature and they're starting to flower. I've got a lot of work to do out here to keep up with all the harvest in the, in the garden. But I also try to take a few minutes to sit out at my cafe table, arranged with all the flowers around it and enjoy my time out here in the garden too. It's so important to remember to take a few minutes to actually enjoy the space that you've created. Take care, you guys.